Hey guys, this is Warren with KL Gadget TV and we have got the iPhone XS Max in our laps since last week as you have seen the unboxing video. And today I'm going to talk about one feature on the iPhone XS Max and that is the dual SIM feature. Well, you might think that the dual SIM feature is really not a big deal on an iPhone because like Android smartphones have been doing dual SIM for such a long, long time. But it's really interesting to see how Apple has implemented the dual SIM feature onto the iPhone XS, XR. 10s max this round because uh, i've been using it for a couple of days really and i somehow find the dual sim feature still a little lacking and this model that i've got over here is the hong kong unit um all thanks to seven mobiles in the river Hut and shopee for sending this unit over for our evaluation and this is the model that is also being sold in china which means the sim tray actually supports two physical sim cards and in the Malaysian market, we might be probably getting the eSIM version, which means you do you still you're still only able to insert one SIM card and there's another embedded SIM, aka eSIM, right inside the phone. So, you know, I actually like um, the, the Hong Kong version of the iPhone XS Max better in that way because um, like most Android phones this most Android phones these days still accepts two physical SIM cards and there's not many operators in Malaysia here that supports eSIM, only Maxis. Maxis is, is the only operator here that supports eSIM, but there's no guarantee that once the iPhone XS and XS Max gets official over here, that the other telcos will probably also launch their version of eSIM. So before we go, go further into it, let's talk about the benefits of eSIM. So eSIM, as we call it, an embedded SIM, is a little chip that is already built right inside your phone to technically save space. So Obviously, this round when Apple promoted the dual SIM feature on the iPhone XS, XS Max and the XR is because there are in fact a lot of iPhone users who are regular travelers. So one of the things when you use a current iPhone, a current gen iPhone is that when you go to overseas and you don't want to spend on expensive roaming charges and so on. So you got to take out your SIM card and put one into the phone itself so that you can avoid all those roaming charges while still receive messages from WhatsApp and do some internet surfing on your phone. However, that's actually, there's actually one defeat here, which means your phone number has to change for almost everything, including things like FaceTime, iMessage, and so on. So that's why the dual SIM feature, iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR is being released to address this issue. There's, there's something about it. I still think that, you know, um, I, I don't really like the idea of eSIM, even though I know it's pretty convenient. It's like, let's say if you want to port to another operator from one another, you just got to scan a QR code and flash some software right inside and you will be automatically switched to the other operator. But then in most cases, I mean, it's probably me and that, that kind of use case might change in the future. I still prefer to just swap out my SIMs like easily to, uh, to another operator because that feels a lot faster and I do need to do all the complicated process of, apart from visiting the, the uh, telco or even just downloading the app. I just think um, switching physical SIM cards is really much more convenient. So yeah, the Malaysian version of the iPhone XS, XX Max and XR it's most likely going to be the eSIM version because that's that's what it is selling in Singapore right now. So in Malaysia, we usually get um, iPhones that is already sold in Singapore. So yeah, accept the fact we're going to get the eSIM version. So um, we're going to talk about a little bit on how the dual SIM feature works on the iPhone XS Max itself. So I already have two SIM cards right inside here. So as you can see, there's actually two network bars on top. The, the, the main, the primary one shows the, uh, the proper signal icon right here but the the second sim slot shows like dots which isn't like very visually complete but once you pull that down boom there you go it's on the lab there's two network bars here there's two icons that says smp which means primary and secondary right so when you actually first set up your iphone 10 10s 10s max or 10r which some of you probably have done so because you bought imported units which i don't really recommend that because to be honest if you get an imported set um, there could be some repairs that local Apple authorized service centers will not be able to fulfill because your unit is not a local unit. Okay, so um, the thing the thing about this is that um, when you set up your first your your iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR, uh, Apple does give you a couple of options to work around the dual SIM capability. So you can either uh, select the main or secondary line as your main cellular data line, just like most Android smartphones out there, or just use 
The second, the secondary SIM slot for data only, which means there won't be any phone calls coming on the secondary data SIM slot. So that means it's, it's pretty good. So which means if you're on roaming and you, you can just save some money by just getting a data only SIM without voice, but then still keeping your local, local country SIM card inside the phone. So that is what Apple has intended the iPhone XS uh, dual SIM feature to work. But here's one thing that I really don't find it that, that nice. That's because the iPhone XS and 10, the XS Max and XR, they don't support dual 4G like on other like Android smartphones. Smartphones like the Galaxy Note 9, the P20, P20 Pro, and even like mid-range smartphones like the Vivo X21 has already supported dual SIM 4G feature. You know, because this the dual SIM feature on the XS and XS Max is built with travelers on mind, but not like what we do right here because basically we have two sim cards like one is for work and the other one could probably be for a personal private a, a private line that we use it for family and stuff and you know it's not like we are roaming on on other networks i i think this this use case this use case is very much applied over here where people have signed up for two different data sims because uh, probably one service provides a better coverage than the other at a certain area that they travel so this is what they do so imagine that um so the, the first I mean, both SIM, SIM slots will definitely uh, support 4G networks, but then you can act only activate 4G on one SIM slot only. So, which means if you get an operator like Yes 4G that operates totally on a 4G network, chances are, and you use another SIM, SIM card as, um, uh, you use another, another operator, let's say Maxis on, on, this, uh, on, on this device itself. So chances are your Yes 4G is not gonna work if you are using your Maxis line as the main line. So it's going to have no signal at all, and that's that's going to be it. Your yes 4G SIM is going to be dead. So I don't think that's really a good thing because um, this phone is really so expensive. The 256 gig model of the iPhone XS Max here is cost about six grand. I mean, according to Seven Mobiles, Seven Mobiles a price list. But I assume that's going to be the price tag as well when it reaches Malaysia. So that's actually not a good thing if you want to have dual for if you want to use dual 4G on this phone itself. So another thing that I find that is not so nice, especially with the use case here in Malaysia, is that, um, you know, like I said, if you use two numbers for contact, one for personal and one for work, and if you acti actively use iMessage as your main messenger, the problem here is that your iMessage and FaceTime line can only be enabled on one single number. And that's not really a good thing. Like I said, if you use two numbers right here, you're gonna face some trouble. You gotta manually switch yourself. If, let's say it's after work and you want to, if you want to have uh, 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 people reach out to you on FaceTime or iMessage, you gotta manually switch them over here, which is actually quite a hassle, to be honest. Another thing that I don't really like about the dual SIM feature on the iPhone XS is in the dialer app. So when you make a phone call, there's this new button on the top right here that asks you to choose primary, uh, use your secondary line or use a primary line for making phone calls. So. In most cases on Android phones, when you tap on the number itself, you, when you press the call button and you'll be prompted to choose which SIM card to call. Whereas over here, you got to choose which SIM card you want to use uh, in, in the very beginning already. Well, it, you might actually get used to it, but I would really prefer if Apple built a secondary button right here on the, on the phone app, or let me just confirm which one I want, I want to call. Because when sometimes when you're in a hurry, and especially when you're in you're roaming in other countries, like this phone is built for travelers, right? So obviously the dual SIM feature has to be great for travelers. So sometimes when you're making a phone call or a FaceTime call using, using, this, um, using this dialer, and you just got to, uh, tap on this to choose which line to go for you might actually miss this out when you're making phone calls and that might accidentally cause unwanted roaming charges at this at this point and finally you know since there's dual sim feature inside and again it's back in malaysia where we use two numbers uh, on the same phone just because we want to separate our work and private line there's no way that you enable dual messenger support like you do on android devices which means you can't have two whatsapp accounts two WeChat accounts for each separate number. So yeah, that's pretty much about the dual SIM feature of the iPhone XS, XS Max and on the XR. They are gonna work around the same. I do wish that Apple would basically enable some of the features, especially like I say, the dual messenger feature, like two WhatsApp accounts on the, on a single device itself. But let's see what happens. Who knows, it might not happen on iOS 12. It might happen on the next new version of iOS, which we don't know what it would be called. Would it be called iOS 13? Not sure about that because the 13 number seems like a 
unlucky number, you know, in the Western country mindset. But we'll definitely see about that. So yeah, um, the iPhone XS Max has been a great phone. Um, I have a very limited time in using this phone and I'm not going to conclude my review of the iPhone XS Max right now because this is not the official unit that is being sold in Malaysia. So like I said, the Malaysian version of the iPhone XS, XS Max and the XR will be the eSIM version. But let's hope that might change when the phone officially launched here. So yeah, that's it on my two cents and my thoughts about the dual SIM feature on the iPhone XS, XS Max, XS Max and the iPhone XR. That's it for now. Thanks for watching this video. Share me your thoughts on what do you think about the dual SIM feature and would you actually just go for an Android device or whether you just want to go for the iPhone XS for the price of 6,000 ringgit. It's pretty expensive, right? I know that, but still, a lot of people still like iOS devices for certain reasons. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next round.